Jesus left the district of Tyre and went by way by the sin of the Sea of Galilee into the district of the Decapolis. And people brought to him a deaf man who had the speech impediment and begged him to lay his hands on him. He took him up by himself away from the crowd. He put his finger into the man's ears and spitting touched his tongue. Then he looked up to heaven and groaned and said to him, Ephata, that is, be open. And immediately the man's ears were opened. His speech impediment was removed, and he spoke plainly. He ordered them not to tell anyone. But the more he ordered them not to, the more they proclaimed it. They were exceedingly astonished, and they said, He has done all things well. He makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we celebrate this feast of Our Lady of Lord. Every feast day of our mother is a reason for us to celebrate. To date on this feast of Lord, we remember that she is our mediator before God, who intercedes with the Lord to grant us help that we need. And above all, that He may grant us health of the body. Whoever has ever been to Lord knows, because they have seen it, or they touch it, are aware of the great numbers of miracles that have taken place there. It is possible to be a witness of these miracles if you have a chance to pray in the grotto where Our Lady appeared to St. Bernadette. Miracles are cures occurred. Sometimes physical cures or miracles happen. I have had chronic Fahrenheit, sore throat, for many years, and it was enough for me one day, without even thinking about it. The Fahrenheit, after drinking the water from Lord, the chronic Fahrenheit disappeared, and it still comes to me very occasionally, and with it ibuprofen, it goes away. And before drinking the Lord of water, there was no way. But that is nothing compared to other great miracles verified by doctors. It is a source of hope, but the greatest miracle, the miracle that can be seen and touched, is that of the conversion of the heart. And I believe that this is what we must look for, especially in Lord. Conversion. It is much more difficult for the heart to be converted than for a paralytic to walk or for a person who would cancer to be cured. Because the legs of the cancer cells do not resist the will of God, they obey. On the other hand, we, with our freedom, do not always obey God. Therefore, we have to ask for the grace of conversion and not only in Lord. In Lord, the conversion are countless. Praying, the grotto makes him many shed tears. Many meet again with the lost child they were, the religious child they were, and so they meet again, hand in hand with Mary, with God. But today is a day that is bitter sweet, at least for me. Sweet, because I celebrate Our Lady, and sour, because it is a day when I remember the announcement of the resignation of Pope Benedict XVI. It is not pleasant to remember the moment. It is not pleasant to recall the images that followed a few days later when he had to leave the Vatican, get on the helicopter to go to the Castel Gandolfo and see how the people at his side wept while he kept his composure. But especially in this year, it is especially hard to remember the moment of Pope Benedict's resignation. It is especially hard because of the manhunt he had been subjected to, ridiculous, absurd, baseless accusations. However, they are aired by the big media, that no matter what happens, no matter what he says, the evidence and the accuse will never be pub published denial. Pope Benedict, who has been the Pope who has done 
the most against pederasty, a relationship between an adult man and a person or adolescent boy, is now being presented in front of men, maybe in front of history, as a collaborator of pederasty. The cruelty that is being shown to his saintly old men, anyone who has met him, as I have, knows perfectly well that he's a saint. Well, these cruelties and this harassment, these slanders, are so horrible and so underserved that today, I repeat, is a day when I cannot stop remembering him and also to pray for him. This week he published a letter in which he expressed his sorrow for what he said are the lies that have been launched against him, lies that come from a sector of the church himself, and that, of course, alive with the big media, with the new world order, seek to discredit a man who has kept the faith intact, who has to struggle to be faithful to the Lord, to the revelation in the Holy Scripture and in tradition. The only strong and firm dick the modernism has found in the last decade. This man is being slandered, humiliated, morally destroyed. An old man who is going to be 95 years old is being pilloried, I repeat, destroyed and harassed in an inhuman hunt, and practically nobody defends him, practically nobody comes out to say it. What they are doing to him is unjust. Therefore, on this day of Our Lady of Lords, which I remember when he presented his resignation, in the midst of the surprise and immense pain that overwhelmed so many of us, I ask in a special way for prayers for him. I ask not for a boot of confidence because confidence implies doubt. I ask for a support of certainty. He is a saint, and what those accuse him of is absolutely false. He will turn one day against his slanders. May God forgive them for the evil they have in their heart, for all the damage they are doing, for the humiliation, especially the men of the church who are collaborating with that. May God forgive them because deep down, it is a lack of faith. It is atheists, dressed as priests, who are launching these landers against a saint who is truly a man who deserves to be on the altars when he dies. Amen.